There are a copious number of online self-publishing companies that promise aspiring authors the opportunity to distribute an ebook all over the world. Uh, millions of authors publish with Kindle Direct Publishing, draft to digital Kobo Writing Life, Nook Press, Smashwords, and hundreds of others. Uh, these companies all have the highest concentration of authors and publish thousands of titles per month. Most authors who self-publish a title never sell more than a handful and over 70% of all authors never derive a true living through their writing. We live in a world full of terrible ebook titles that ruin ebook discovery and make it difficult to find a good book. Being an author, a lot of people something that they want to do. YouGov, a UK research and development company, conducted a recent poll that said the most desirable job is an author, with 60% of people saying they'd like to do it for a living. This is 24% higher than who want to be a TV presenter, or a remarkable 29% higher than who wants to be a movie star. You only have to look at J.K. Rowling, you know, quintessential success story in the UK. Her Twitter feed is a thing of legend. Uh, sadly, just being an author on its own does not earn significant revenue. A survey of 1,000 self-published writers, one of the most comprehensive insights into the growing market to date, found that while a small percentage of authors were bringing in sums of $100,000 plus, the average author earnings were just 10000 a year. This amount, however, is quickly skewed by the top earners with less than 10% of self-publishing authors earning 75% of the reported revenue and half of writers earning less than $500. Meanwhile, in the US, the median household income is about 52000 a year. The average indie author in the USA is earning less than $100 over the lifetime of their book. So indie authors, all in all, they represent about 34% of the market in the U.S. So out of all the books published, they're roughly about 34%. The rest are just small boutique houses, small, medium, and large publishing companies. Um, you know, I think that authors who do not derive their primary living from writing books are hobbyists. They're not really authors, they're not professionals, they're they're hobbyists. They're amateurs. Uh, they simply e submit an ebook just because they can. Uh, there's no quality control mechanism for companies that offer self-publishing solutions. Uh, they're just really happy to have as many users as possible. They play the numbers game. The more authors that publish, the more money that they generate from commissions, even if it's just a few sales over the lifetime of a title it all adds up the vast majority of self-published authors you know obviously won't earn a lot of money and they're alone marginalized for the most part they're not respected by publishers they're not really even respected by other indie authors many writing organizations such as the romance writers of america canadian writing union published authors network and you know science fiction writers of america they'll accept indie published books but they have higher criteria you know you have to earn five thousand um, dollars from your title and because there's so many authors not even earning a hundred dollars it's almost impossible for authors to join established writing organizations to get help to get assistance to get access to their resources uh to chat with other um, you know authors that are actually selling a lot of titles so th i think the big problem that i have is all major bookstores their s titles are listed side by side w what i mean by that is if you submit a self-published title it's listed side by side with titles listed by major publishers and when you when you have that it creates a problem because traditionally published books have some measure of expectation of quality now, this is either with editing cover art formatting foreign translations and just writing quality i'm not saying that all traditionally published books are good because that's extremely subjective but indie titles have no quality and control and authors are just merely uploading a word document to amazon and clicking publish so what i think is that there is a lot of hampering of ebook discovery going on right now because 
authors are just throwing everything at the wall and hoping someone will stick. Uh, Chuck Wittig mentioned in a recent blog post, uh, the sheer number of releases is an issue all of its own. It's becoming increasingly hard to stand out merely when publishing a book in either form. It's like trying to get a droplet of water to stand out in a goddamn ocean. My suggestion is for all major online bookstores that take submitted any content to create their own sections for self-published writers. I do not think that indie titles and, and traditionally published titles should be in the same sections because it hampers ebook discovery. Some people will consider that segregation. Hey, I'm all for it. So why is this a problem like why is my dander up about this well there's so many books being published by self-published authors that it's out there's more of them than books by traditional publishers and if you're a casual reader looking for a new and exciting title you're browsing Amazon you're browsing Kobo you're looking for a good read you download something it's edited poorly the you know it doesn't make sense the book it, it's crappily written and what is this creating is ebook sales are going down uh, sales of consumer ebooks plunged 17 percent in the uk it's the lowest level since 2011 uh, in the united states it declined by 15 percent for all of 2016 and in the u.s publishers print has increased uh, paperbacks hardcovers uh, seven percent four percent you know every sort of met paperback mass market title has grown so why have users uh, are, why are they abandoning the ebooks well I wouldn't say that the ebook dream is over but purely people are clearly making decisions on where they want to spend their time when this, their screens traditionally published books I've also gotten more expensive due to agency prices and consumers are spending less money on digital and buying more print. If you have a new book that comes out and the ebook is the same as the hardcover, many people are just going with the hardcover because, you know, after a week, it's discounted by like 30%, 50% Barnes and Noble or Chapters Indigo in Canada or, uh, you know, in the UK, for example, the uh, you know Waterstones discounts them heavily, and so it kind of makes sense to buy print. You walk into a bookstore and there is no indie titles. It's a thing of beauty. It's bookstores strategically organize their stores so the titles that are written by popular authors or new and notable authors break out bestsellers of tomorrow they're all organized by the door so as soon as you walk in it's a ton of titles right there that are have either our bestsellers you know the James Patterson's JK Rowling's of the world or people like you know Justin Cronin you know, not a household name by any means, but his three titles, uh, uh, you know, City of Mirrors, um, have, have sold thousands and thousands and thousands of copies. He's millionaire from just writing books. So I think that ebooks are down because of just the shit amount of indie books that are out there right now. Traditionally, books, traditional publishers' ebooks are too expensive. And I think that indie authors, all in all, have ruined ebooks, and this is why ebooks people are buying more print. There's just too many shit ebooks out there. That how many times are you going to be burned as a casual reader reading a few crappy indie titles before you're saying, "Man, I'm just going to go to Barnes and Noble." At least, like, there's some measure of like quality and control there. What do you guys think? Drop a comment below. For Goody Reader, my name is Michael.